and product uh, and productivity so 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 of course uh, you also need to have a trusted partner who can deliver services so in all these are the let's say the macro points uh, which which are uh, let's say relevant so so the theme of today is as i said minimize physical and fin financial loss uh, from from unforeseen events in uh, an FNB plant electrification system. So then from there we try to break it down a bit and then to, to see what are the what are the messages which are coming out. So when you say minimize is basically um, uh, minimize losses is basically to make sure that you have ensuring uh, ensuring connectivity of power supply. Uh, when you talk about physical loss, you are talking about personal personal safety. When we talk about financial loss, generally the indication is about safeguarding power assets or the uh, or the power um, the equipment. And then unforeseen events are basically the system disturbances, which may be external or internal to the plant. So these are the let's say the four crit, uh, criteria uh, or or the themes in which uh, we will consider the solutions uh, going forward. So so uh, moving on so. So, so when we talk about external disturbance or the system disturbances, which are external or internal, these could be related to when we talk about specific to power management. Uh, it could be related to eye landing uh, and fast load shedding. Uh, when we talk about personnel safety, uh, it is related generally to arc flash protection or bus bar protection. Ensuring power continuity of power supply uh, can be mapped to uh, the power source control. So basically, based on the the kind of captive power which is available within the plant, could be based on solar or even traditional generators. Um, then uh, you need to also may, uh, uh, consider uh, if you need to uh, bring in a particular uh, source, uh, you need to synchronize that so that it is then, uh, um, let's say, able to supply. Um, then you have peak shaving or load shedding. So uh, we, will, we will see all these things later. And lastly, uh, safeguarding power assets, meaning asset management and monitoring and diagnostics so these are let's say the the, the uh, some of the solutions which we have identified to uh, satisfy these uh, these uh, expectations so then we start uh, moving into the uh, solutions uh, going forward um, the first one is is um, uh, so okay before we go on to that i have tried to represent a typical power distribution network uh, for an FNB plant. So uh, so you have the power supply coming in from the utility grid, then you have a distribution system um, uh, which will distribute to the many plants. So one such plant is represented here. And then of course, I have also considered uh, renewables, um, uh, let's say um, typically a solar plant with a battery energy storage system as one source and then maybe a traditional generator could be a gas turbine or steam turbine generator also connected to the to the system together with the grid and then you have the medium voltage and low voltage distribution uh, which are then going to different uh, parts of the plant um, so so the plant uh, typically in a soft drink plant could be uh, a syrup or a pasteurizing or a carbonating bottling in any of these kind of uh, sub processes uh, in a dairy it could be a cold storage uh, bottling and things like that um, so so uh, so these are let's say the the, the different um, aspects which you can consider so so you could have easily multiple of these uh, these uh, plants um, in a in a typical um, medium to large size plant yeah so it is based on this example, which we will be covering all the remaining examples, all, all the solutions, sorry. So the first is basically um, 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 a system eye landing. So, so it's basically that um, when 
uh, utility utility grid is working in parallel uh, with the implant generation so you need eye landing so basically to make sure that this um, so one could be based on vector voltage shift um, so it's basically that is the example shown here so wherein if there is a disturbance it could be so that the the uh, the, the voltage waveform is uh, is delayed a bit and and that delay uh, can be can be um, can be captured and if there is a delay beyond a particular setting you can actually trip the breaker so uh, um, so it's basically that this is a device which will sense the uh, sense the uh, voltage anomaly and then trip the breaker uh, which is basically coming into the uh, into the plant so of course there are other ways of doing this thing uh, using under voltage or over voltage um, or under frequency or over, over frequency uh, df by dt or even reverse power flow so this is typically performed by uh, relay on uh, relays. Um, okay, in this example, I have shown a 640, uh, REC 640, and uh, typically uh, we have, uh, let's say, uh, this kind of an operation within 50, mil 50 milliseconds. So, so this is, let's say, the first example of a solution uh, uh, which will uh, eyeline the system as soon as there is a problem in the grid. Moving on to the next kind of solution is basically um, um, uh, an arc flash or a bus bar differential protection, basically uh, to ensure that people who are working in the in the substation or in front of the um, switch gear are are safe uh, always, uh, especially the substation operational uh, operation engineers. So, uh, so the thing is that. Um, it is based on a selective and, uh, and a very fast acting mechanism based on either you sense uh, if there is a fault you either sense uh, uh, um, uh, because of a, 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 a flashover or or let's say even uh, even um, um, a of deterioration of insulation of a, of a cable so you can sense that light or basically an anomaly in the current and typically you can have these sensors in either the cable compartment or the circuit breaker compartment or the bus bar compartment if the arc is detected in the in the panel and and uh, and um, if it is related to a cable or a circuit breaker compartment then only that feeder is stripped and in case if the arc is detected in a bus bar compartment um, then uh, the bus differential can be activated uh, or it could be also depending if there is a flashover uh, between the bus bars. So, so then you have all the tri all the breakers tripped in that bus bar. So this can be uh, done uh, by either dedicated devices. In this example, I have shown a case of a ultra modern solution. Uh, 18 milliseconds, something like this, 1.8, and um, and an arc protection could be uh, somewhere um, in this case with a centralized system could be somewhere 6 to 12, something like this. But if you have, uh, we can also have, let's say, dedicated arc protection devices uh, which can which can even uh, do isolation within 2.5 milliseconds. So so we have some references coming up later, so which I can sh uh, share with you later. So the third kind of uh, solution is basically to tackle grid disturbances um, uh, or implant disturbances, basically to ensure that there are no blackouts, because blackouts can be really uh, costly, because uh, it, it can really uh, ensure. I mean, it can re really um, uh, put back operations by, for for quite a lot of time until the system uh, or the process is set back uh, set uh, to normal. So you can lose a lot of revenue uh, due to, uh, during that period. So 
it's it's uh, it it can be based on if it is an islanded network or after just uh, the load uh, islanding has happened you can you can have a situation where you have less of power uh, to uh, to to feed your loads so so that can, can that can happen and uh, it can if if it is inadequate then the frequency can fall and then you can have a a, a cascade and and uh, blacking uh, blacking out your complete system so the the load shedding is obviously needed to make sure that uh, uh, there is a power balance maintained and may, uh, and ensuring that the moment there is a fault or a, or a, or in, unforeseen event happening uh, you can actually then shed loads uh, low priority loads to match the deficit of power uh, and by doing that you are uh, ensuring power to the critical loads this is typically uh, we have different kinds of solutions available. Uh, one such example, which I'm showing, is based on rel rely on PML 630, and then of course it it then uh, has a cluster of um, products around it to to make sure that it is all functioning properly, uh, feeding it with the data what is needed for load shedding, and uh, we can we can have sh uh, load shedding at both medium voltage and low voltage. It's primarily based on 61850. Um, and which is basically the uh, uh, a, a way of not only ensuring interoperability but also uh, high speed. Um, then uh, the typical thing is that okay, we can start shedding typically at low voltage so that we can be as granular as possible and as distributed as possible, and um, and we can also make sure that the extent of shedding is just needed uh, um, based on how much power we we have lost. So overall performance in this kind of uh, scheme is typically uh, 40 to 60 milliseconds um, uh, until the shed command is given. And once uh, you, you shed the command, um, uh, the breaker opening has happens and then eventual load relief is about within 100 milliseconds. So, so this is, let's say, uh, described here. So, so there was an animation, but uh, now, okay. Um, um, this basically I have superimposed on the on the uh, on the uh, on the single line, uh, diagram the the, the network uh, the, the the secondary network for the solution uh, where it comprises of the PML 630 and devices. So what happens is in case if there is a fault on the grid or, or let's say depending on a power source uh, a captive power generation which is lost. Then what can happen is that um, loads can be shed either in the medium, uh, low voltage side. Um, if that is not sufficient, then it can be switched over to the medium voltage side. So, so you can actually choose how to how to design your scheme and 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 achieve the load relief. The next uh, uh, solution is basically to ensure that there is continuous power supply and also doing uh, things efficiently. So, so you, as I said, in the in the in the single line diagram, you already have in in the in the example we considered uh, typical uh, traditional generators uh, like a steam turbine or a gas turbine generator, and then also you have. Uh, um, um, a solar plant or a, a solar power and uh, um, a battery energy storage system combination. So, so it could be so that you have a, a, um, an incomer uh, from the utility, and you would need to, um, uh, let's say, ensure that there is a power factor maintained at the grid coupling point, so that we don't invite penalties uh, uh, because of um, because of um, a poor power factor. So it also um, it is applicable that okay if there is a, a islanded system so there is no uh, grid supply then you would need to uh, ensure that your system is running at the stipulated voltage and frequency. So so in that situation you need to ensure that uh, um, the, the the implant generation whatever you are you are having is then running according to its capacity and the reserves are considered. And you are able to then run it more efficiently. So, so the idea is that okay. Um, so once you have the uh, um, uh, a tariff meter on the on the coupling point, it provides you the, with the power factor uh, which is which is uh, prevalent. And based on the power factor, you will adjust the power output from the generators 
or from the solar plant to make sure that you are able to uh, maintain that power factor. Uh, so, so this is also uh, needed uh, to make sure that uh, you are in a position to to operate your plant at a, at an optimum level um, uh, and an efficient uh, manner. So, so that's uh, and this this solution is also is a based on a cluster of products, meters, um, I/O units, protection relays, and then a SCADA system, and it's based on 61850. Then we just extend the previously seen uh, slide where we were controlling the power output from the from the generator or power sources um, in the plant. We can then extend that by having an energy management feature or a, uh, an optimization feature in the SCADA system so that we are in a position to minimize the total energy cost uh, of, of whatever power is gener being generated so that the the uh, procurement cost from the utility grid is maintained as a, at a minimum uh, or an optimum let's put it this way so so the idea is that okay based on the load forecasting uh, so so this can do a load forecasting uh, of based on the plants uh, plant operational uh, loads at different points in time of the day and based on that uh, uh, and also considering the drawl from the grid you can uh, make sure that you are able to ramp up the generators or ramp down as needed so that this this uh, contractual violation doesn't happen also making sure that the cost of procurement is kept at a minimum so this is also called uh, peak shaving uh, in many cases so this is doing peak shaving by controlling the generator uh, uh, generator power so that the demand uh, flat uh, curve is flattened Another way of looking at uh, peak shaving is to do load management. So, so basically that based on the same load forecasting available in the SCADA system, uh, then one, one can uh, also trigger load shedding through the load shedding device, so which can shed loads uh, uh, at the different places like what I mentioned earlier at the low voltage or medium voltage level so that the, the power drawn from the grid is also controlled in the other way. So this is one is based on energy management, one is based on load management. So you can, you can have a flexible approach based on how, what your needs are. Uh, then uh, we are talking about um, uh, synchronization. Uh, uh, so, so basically, that uh, as I said, as soon as uh, if if you if you have uh, a situation where your plant is running um, uh, in an islanded situation, uh, so where your your generators are generating full power, and then you need uh, and and if you think that the loads are actually increasing, and then you need utility support, then you need to bring in the utility grid as quickly as possible. So, in that situation. This device, REC 640, will do the uh, do do the needful by uh, by connecting um, uh, or by measuring the voltages on both sides um, and and making sure that through the generator device uh, you are able to ramp up the generator and once the once the voltage uh, frequency and the phase difference on both sides.
Uh, can you hear me? Uh, I was told that uh, my my audio is not clear. Bruce, would you, were you able to hear so far? Yeah, we hear you, uh, Ganesh. We lost you for a little while, but you are here now. But uh, w were you able to hear me earlier? In the... No, we lost we we lost you for about uh, twenty seconds. Okay, but did you? Uh, talk, uh, I talked about the synchronizing the, uh, as as a last topic. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fine. Fine. Uh, because I was told by uh, Sandra that I uh, she wasn't able to hear me. So okay. Fine. So uh, things look like things are working. So for synchronization, you can you can synchronize a generator or a, or a, or a, or a, a solar plant uh, to the to the uh, plant grid. Uh, or if you have um, um, uh, power sources on both sides of a, of a network of two networks, you can uh, synchronize that as well. So this solution, based on 61850 and Rec 640, will be able to do all that. So so the example what I showed you was only for synchronizing the grid. Uh, lastly, uh, the last category is basically to uh, uh, towards safeguarding power assets. Uh, so, so whatever assets we have, like switchgear um, um, uh, or transformers, so, so, so we we need to make sure that they are they are taken care of, and uh, and uh, and for each of these, we we have let's say a dedicated uh, devices as well as sensors uh, which can which can detect temperature rise or partial discharge, and and they then are able to uh, connect to uh, to the network. Uh, the substation network together with the protection relays and and uh, then be able to do monitoring and diagnostics uh, and and the uh, and the and the data of these monitoring and diagnostics can be visualized in the, on the SCADA system and uh, and we will we, we also have the capability of providing uh, advanced applications um, which can run either on premise uh, or let's say on the customer site or uh, um, which we call on-premises, uh, or even if needed on the cloud, uh, if, if 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 that suits the uh, uh, philosophy uh, of the of the uh, of the customer. So basically, that you can have um, uh, for all purposes, um, asset management, energy management, and monitoring, diagnostics, all built into the all built into the on-site system. So. So this you can do it for um, um, medium voltage and low voltage assets, and uh, and uh, it, it is also possible for a user to have a handheld device to directly access the data, uh, what is being uh, let's say processed and let's say from by these applications running in the SCADA system or on the uh, on-premise system. So these are let's say the uh, some of the solutions which we thought we will share with you uh, to 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 achieve these objectives. We have some references um, going forward. So on peak shaving or load shedding uh, for a, a sugar and ethanol uh, ethanol production plant in Brazil, where uh, um, PML 630 and the rely on devices and switchgear etc. were were deployed. And and uh, uh, the customer gave a feedback that okay they were able to uh, save plant a couple of times and they were able to do a, a fast return on investment about six months time so so there are let's say um, this is one example uh, for a for a for a sugar plant uh, next would be a kind of a pizza production plant where. Uh, there is a typical um, digital solution using switchgear, uh, 61850 uh, devices, uh, reliant devices based on 61850, and and uh, and goose goose communication is ensuring that there is let's say uh, fast peer-to-peer -peer communication and for uh, logic selectivity. So so basically, it's a full digital solution offered to this customer uh, for for piece of production. Uh, then next uh, would be an ice cream production plant also in Italy, uh, which basically has the same same combination of uh, of, of systems by and large. Uh, uh, basically, also uh, having a remote management capability for quick troubleshooting. Um, then uh, I have a, a, a solution for load shedding, uh, which was provided for a customer in Thailand for uh, which uh, deals with spices and flavor production. 
and and there also um, uh, the the load shedding solution was able to quickly restore the, i mean uh, quickly uh, save the plant where, which also had let's say in plant generation um, and 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 uh, and it was able to um, ensure that uh, high uh, uh, continuity of um, uh, power supply to critical loads um, then we have the last example for uh, arc protection so this was this is basing, uh, basically using a very dedicated arc, pro arc protection solution um, co called ria uh, and and uh, this was uh, this is able to uh, um, say detect and um, send a trip signal within 2.5 milliseconds um, uh, to 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 ensure that uh, uh, there is safety for customer personnel so these were some five examples and lastly i then conclude that okay uh, the take, the takeaways are that uh, these solutions whatever we have uh, dealt some of the solutions i should mention there are many other solutions as well so they are able to safeguard investment enhance operational safety ensure uh, ensure continuity of production uh, uh, it it provides timely system and asset information uh, so that this data is available for personnel to pursue proactive corrective actions uh, it, there is a high level of system performance um, um, and lastly since they are all based on open communication standards like 61850 modbus or opc uh, we have high levels of interoperability possible and uh, uh, lastly the uh, we, we are able to then confidently say that uh, uh, abb solutions and products facilitate for safer more reliable and smarter uh, fnb processes thank you i am open for questions now Ruta, you can start. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Ganesh. So uh, my name is uh, Bruce Bennett, and I am uh, based in our power conditioning factory in Napier in New Zealand. So uh, this morning, we will continue with the theme of uh, minimizing losses um, from unforeseen events in food and beverage electrification. So we will take a look at uh, what are the power quality challenges and the symptoms and causes of uh, some of the power quality events that we see. Uh, then we will take a look at some applications, some success stories, and talk about uh, why to choose uh, power conditioning from ABB. So the kind of uh, challenges that uh, we see in the food and beverage plant is uh, some tangible costs in terms of uh, production wastage and uh, non-compliance to, to standards uh, from events that are due to power quality. Um, sometimes uh, what is even a bigger cost to food and beverage production facilities are these intangibles where we have uh, customers in the value chain who are not taking delivery of their product due to the interruption in the factory, um, the aggravation from the customers, and uh, opportunity costs that we lose. And you'll see here at the bottom there, we say 98% uh, of food and beverage manufacturers say that downtime costs them more than $100,000 per hour. Um, and can be up to 4% of the company's annual turnover. So a reasonably significant cost to consider in the food and beverage operation. Power quality events that we see in plants, uh, the one that we are, we are most commonly hear about is uh, harmonics, okay? Um, Perhaps the other very common thing that we hear is this unbalance where we have a, a voltage 
on one phase, which is uh, very different to the other and can cause some two phasing in motors. And we also hear about uh, transients and fluctuations. What we don't hear a lot about is uh, voltage sags. And in actual fact, voltage sags in, uh, in terms of cost impact on the food and beverage plant is in fact the, uh, the biggest destructive power quality event that exists. Up to 92% of financial losses due to power quality are the result of voltage sags. So this is our business. This is where we focus our efforts on uh, mitigating and, and minimizing the effects of these uh, voltage sags and voltage swells. So what are these voltage sags? Well, in terms of a definition, just so that we know we're talking about the right thing. Now, depending on which hemisphere you're in, a sag is either a sag or a dip, and a swell is a swell or surge. So we, we use these terms interchangeably. In effect, they last less than 60 seconds, okay? Um, but the delta, the, the, the change from the nominal voltage is greater than 10%. And they can occur, occur on a, as a single phase sag, a two phase sag, or a three phase sag, and they may also be balanced or unbalanced. So one phase may have a greater magnitude of sag than another, but it may be occurring on uh, across all three phases in, uh, in different magnitudes. The key thing here when we're talking about SAGs is that time duration. So it's, the duration is less than 60 seconds. Where we're talking about a, uh, a variance in the waveform longer than 60 seconds, this is what we refer to as an under voltage or an over voltage. Causes of these, number one is weather. Uh, it's very, very uh, tempting when we uh, discover that we have a, a voltage sag problem in our food and beverage plant to look to the utility and the, the, the power supplier. But in actual fact, uh, weather is the biggest cause of uh, voltage sag, voltage swell issues. Um, and you see on the graph there, maybe not quite so well uh, typed, but uh, Utility and construction uh, traffic accidents is uh, the next uh, the next biggest thing thrown, coming along there. <clears throat> we do uh, quite a bus quite a bit of business in uh, Singapore in this business, and uh, Singapore, as many people know, the, the power reticulation is all underground, but that does not stop construction from excavating cables or from uh, drivers driving into uh, pad mount transformers or switchgear mounted on the side of the road. And all of these things do cause uh, some disturbance on the network. When we uh, take a look at uh, what a utility network might look like with voltage sags, these red dots on the graph here are what we are able to plot. So you'll notice that uh, from 90 to 100 percent of on the uh, vertical axis there. Uh, we consider this to be a, a normal range, so anything below 90% voltage remaining, remember that uh, that delta of 10% is really what we're looking for. And what we commonly see, we always see a cluster of these, uh, these red dots, these events, around this time of 100 milliseconds. So 100 milliseconds there is uh, just five cycles. So when we look at the horizontal scale here, just bear in mind that it is a logarithmic scale. So the 1000 millisecond there is our one second, there's our 50 hertz, our 50 cycles. So at 100 milliseconds is only five cycles. And in the shaded areas here, you will see uh, we have listed some very common events that happen in a factory where you will, uh, where these voltage events occur. Perhaps the most common is these uh, variable speed drives tripping. And as variable speed drive uh, technology has moved on, um, they have become smaller and smaller. And one of the things that we see in our business is more and more common we are being uh, contacted because the symptom that raises its head most is these VSDs tripping. And the reason for this is uh, that this smaller, smaller full footprint means smaller and smaller capacitors, so less ability to ride through these, uh, these voltage events. 
The important thing to uh, to note here, the message that we are, we're telling you is that it does not matter how good the the utility network is and how good the grid is, that everywhere in the world, this picture, if you want to call it a picture of, uh, of red dots, looks very much the same. So when we look in the USA, over a 12 month period, we see events around this 100 milliseconds, 10 to 100 milliseconds in South Korea, there we go around this 100 millisecond uh, mark, um, and uh, Slovakia, and even also in New Zealand, where obviously we do a, a lot of logging here. Again, the picture looks the same around this 100 millisecond mark. So, in food and beverage applications, uh, many people are uh, familiar with uh, UPS, uninterrupted power supply. In simple terms, the difference between uh, the, the power conditioning equipment, which we're going to talk about shortly, and uh, UPS, is the power conditioning equipment is specifically designed for the heavy industrial electrical loads. So in simple terms, where you have rotating machinery, so uh, conveyor belts, pumps, fans, things like this, and UPS is uh, more designed for um, the digital loads, the control loads, the PLCs, um, and uh, so it's very small light motors. So the kind of applications where we are able to provide protection to the process loads, um, packing, filling, picking, labeling, pumps, blowers, feeders, burners, as you see, many of these are rotating machinery where you have a rotating load uh, is very common. And um, the PCS100 solution that we're going to talk about is specifically designed for these industrial process loads and to pr protect those from these, uh, these voltage sag events. It is a one-to-one -one rating, so no derating required for rotation, unlike uh, other machinery where and other protection schemes where you may require 250% derating for the industrial rotating load. So in terms of uh, product, what we're talking about with the power conditioning product, um, leading the way is our PCS100 AVC40 for sag and swell correction. So these are available for power ranges 150 kVA to 3.6 MVA. Um, full correction from detection to full correction of the waveform in less than 10 milliseconds. So very, very fast, less than half a cycle. And these have a, uh, a voltage application range from 208 volts through to 480 volt, three phase. Um, as you'll see in the architecture very shortly in the topology, uh, very efficient also. The AVC20 is our other product in the, in the AVC range. And the AVC20 is for constant voltage regulation. So there is a difference between uh, voltage regulation and sag and swell correction. So voltage regulation, we are talking about the under voltage and over voltage range, so longer than 60 seconds. So where we have a, a drop in the voltage, perhaps in an industrial park, where uh, my factory runs 24-7, but my next door neighbours have large loads and they only work uh, 10 hours, 12 hours per day, just daytime hours. At night time, maybe my voltage is high and in the, in the daytime, maybe my voltage is low, but I need it to be at 400 volt all day. Then the AVC20 is the, the product that will keep me at 400 volt all day. The operation of the, both the AVC20 and the AVC40. So on our left hand side here, uh, in our normal state of operation, when the voltage is close to the nominal level, uh, you'll see the, uh, the utility voltage waveform is uh, normal and the AVC is sitting uh, perhaps in, a, in a, a partial standby mode, looking, monitoring that, uh, that voltage, waiting for something to happen but passing through that, that normal voltage to the customer load. 
you'll see that the uh, the AVC is made up of uh, uh, three uh, major parts, or four, sorry, four major parts really: uh, a rectifier, an inverter. Um, this bypass, which is actually uh, inside the inverter as part of the inverter, and an injection transformer. There is no switch, there is no disconnect point between the protection, the customer's protection breaker and the customer's load. So there is no possibility of the AVC to drop the customer's load. In the uh, middle, diagram here is where we look at the, if we look at the utility waveform utility voltage waveform you'll see that there is a variation in that waveform there is a, a sag in that waveform and that is very quickly detected by the AVC 40 or the AVC 20 and the rectifier and inverter fire into gear and inject through the injection transformer the missing voltage to top off the voltage and then what we supply to the customer is the uh, supplied load, the, the nominal voltage that the customer is looking for. When this does this, obviously there can be some uh, phase shifting through the distribution transformer and there are some, uh, some other phase vectoring things that, that happen that we can spend an entire day uh, talking about if you want to. Um, but uh, <clears throat> because we are power electronics, we, we we inject vectors that also correct those phase angles and top off the, the voltage to give the customer the, the three phase load at, uh, at the phase angles they are expecting to see. And all of this, remember that we do this in less than half a cycle. So the effect on the customer, they see nominal voltage. We mentioned the uh, internal bypass. So on the right-hand side here, we have the diagram with the internal bypass open, uh, closed, sorry. So where the, the internal bypass has operated. And this may be in the case where uh, the voltage variation is beyond the capability of the AVC to correct, or there is an overcurrent situation, um, such as a, uh, a short circuit on the customer load. Perhaps there is a, a motor faulted. So we need to allow high current to flow but we don't want the power electronics to be involved in this. So uh, again, at very high speed, we close that, that uh, internal bypass, which is effectively takes the power electronics and takes the AVC out of circuit, just leaving a reactor uh, in series with the load. And we allow that fault current to flow. And once the uh, fault has cleared and the current has come back to normal, that internal bypass will, will open again. No manual intervention required. So some of our uh, customers and successes that we have had. So uh, Fonterra, who is uh, uh, the dairy supply company here in New Zealand, actually, um, at their uh, Takanini site, they produce uh, UHT milk and uh, they have uh, experienced some issues with voltage sags there over the years. And uh, each one, uh, each time they have one of these voltage sags, it shuts the production lines down, or it, it actually kicks off the uh, clean in place process in the in the factory. And that clean in place process takes four hours. There are seven production lines. Um, although all seven production lines go into this process and they cannot stop this process until it finishes. Um, so all up, there is 28 hours of, uh, of downtime. So they've installed a uh, AVC 40 uh, to, to mitigate this. And uh, in the time that it was uh, installed, uh, within four months, it had captured uh, enough voltage sags that would otherwise have shut down uh, the factory um, and they uh, generated a payback period within that four month period. And you'll see at the bottom there, um, their estimated annual savings are around half a million dollars per year. Coca-Cola in uh, Indonesia, um, in this particular site, this is a AVC 20. So the, at this site, they installed a uh, filling 
machine that also has a, uh, a process that it uh, carries out on the PET bottles that are very, very thin walled and uh, the machine requires a very, very small, uh, within 2% of uh, the correct voltage supplied to this. The machine is a 400 volt machine. The utility supply to the plant was 380 volts. So you can see the customer had a number of choices as to uh, how they could uh, mitigate this and deliver the 400 volts to the machine. Remembering also that the utility supply voltage was varying quite fast, uh, up and down, and uh, was not steady due to uh, perhaps the state of the, the, the infrastructure, but also because of uh, neighbouring facilities and neighbouring plants. So uh, Coca-Cola and uh, ABB Indonesia chose and recommended the, the AVC20 to uh, protect this machine. And the result is that they have a, uh, a regulated 400 volt supply um, that only varies within uh, about 0.5 of a volt, um, no matter what's happening out on the utility as the voltage changes up and down. Uh, the AVC20 is able to capture this uh, very, very fast, um, similar time to the AVC40 in less than a cycle, and maintain that 400 volt supply to the machine. In Oman, <clears throat> the mushroom uh, company here, this uh, the the the, Barker, uh, the Gulf Mushroom uh, Product Company has been uh, well known for introducing uh, automation into their process, and uh, one of the things that they have there is a very sophisticated climate control system, um, and uh, the the voltage variation was uh, continually shutting down and uh, playing up with uh, settings on this. Uh, climate control system. Once again, um, some monitoring and some logging uh, to determine what was going, what was happening at the site, what was the supply coming in, and what were the events that were occurring, um, and then to uh, consult with the customer and uh, deliver a solution and propose a solution to them and uh, introduced a uh, AVC40, installed the AVC40, um, and uh, as you see at the bottom there, they were experiencing over 30 downtime events for year per year, um, more than one, more than $50,000 per event. So uh, the AVC40 has proved to be a rather essential piece of equipment in this facility. Some examples of uh, uh, companies that we have helped, and you'll see we have uh, quite a lot of experience in this business with over 2 million KVA, 2 GVA of uh, installed base uh, globally. So one of our uh, very good friends from Fonterra here, Mr. Peter Williams, um, there is a, a, a video that uh, many people may have seen uh, starring Mr. Williams here. Um, is a short video of the uh, AVC40 installation at the Frontera plant, and uh, just a nice quote there that uh, Peter brings up is uh, that uh, Frontera's mission is to become the world's most trusted source of nutrition, and ABB is a crucial part of that process. I mentioned before that we have a, uh, a global network. We have a global network of uh, channel partners. We have a global network of um, service people, and we have a global network of uh, sales people. Um, in addition to the AVC uh, products that we've talked about today, we have a, a comprehensive portfolio of, uh, of other products in, in other industries also. Um, it also allows us to uh, to enhance our offering to the food and beverage uh, industry. We have uh, over 30 years of experience in this uh, in this power conditioning uh, business, and we have uh, a very uh, proven and reliable uh, design, and of course uh, safe with the BCS 100 portfolio.
food and beverage uh, manufacturers, uh, one of the big drivers is this uh, value chain, downstream value chain, preventing out of stock, preventing uh, uh, empty warehouses, missed deliveries um, due to events occurring in the factory. Um, and this is the, the business that the uh, power conditioning people here in New Zealand are in. Um, and this is what uh, the PCS100 uh, range portfolio offers for the food and beverage manufacturer. And there is a number of uh, uh, sites, both on the ABB website and also available from your local, uh, your local sales offices. Um, where you can see more and more of the PCS100 range. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, I think we are able to take questions. So is the ABC40 collection time same for all types and sizes of taxa? Uh, yes. So the ABC40 uh, correction time is uh, from detection to full correction is less than half a second. And this uh, does not matter whether we're, this is a single phase or a three phase, a two phase or unbalanced uh, sag. So uh, one, once that uh, voltage variation is detected, then very quickly uh, the, the, the calculations are made and as there is continual monitoring and continual assessing uh, during the SAG, because remember the SAG is not a square wave, so the SAG uh, event will vary throughout its duration, um, but uh, uh, we will correct with, in less than half a second, no matter what the, the size or duration of the SAG. There's a question for Nesha. Uh, do uh, you work with the support cloud connectivity for asset on energy management? Yes, um, we do support. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. So we do support uh, both uh, uh, cloud connectivity or uh, on-premise. So by and large, we feel that most of our customers would be still preferring an on-premises uh, approach. But uh, definitely, uh, we have we do have cloud cloud connectivity solutions as well. And uh, depending on where uh, the customer would like to have it, whether in, in in their own private cloud or on an ABB cloud. So uh, those considerations are always possible. Yes. And then there is another question related to uh, the support to non-ABB devices in your solution. Yeah, as I mentioned uh, during the uh, during the presentation that. Uh, most of our solutions are based on 6150 or uh, based on open standards. So, so it is always possible for us to, um, let's say, um, introduce uh, or let's say also consider third-party devices which are um, which are able to adhere to the standards and necessary um, data models to be to be able to be participating in the solutions which we mentioned. So, so that's let's say the uh, the, the approach. So. So it is interoperable, so so then we can always have third-party devices connected into the solution. And then there is a last question for Bruce. What the, sorry, um, what does the AVC internal bypass do? The internal bypass, okay, so the, the internal bypass is there, uh, uh, one, to protect the AVC, but uh, perhaps most importantly is to ensure that the customer's load is always supplied with uh, voltage. So uh, if, there is a, uh, if there is a fault on the customer side, then uh, we, we need to allow higher current to flow for fault conditions. Um, if there is a failure in the AVC itself, if the, if the AVC suffers a, a, a fatal error and needs to shut down, then the default state is bypass closed. So in effect, the, the, the AVC becomes non-existent 
and all that is left in circuit is a uh, a coil in series, a reactor in series, with the uh, with the customer's load. So any voltage that is on the utility is what the the customer will see. So the AVC does not disconnect the customer's load. So you will, we will never ever drop the customer's load. Perfect. So there are no other questions, and I would like to thank you all the attendees to have been, been here with us. And um, well, have a nice day or evening. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye.